All right, hi, Britt. Hi, Kristen. Welcome to the Superhuman Mind blog. Hi, how are you doing? Good. It's a long time no see. Yeah, it's been a while. Well, I'm back in track now. So I understand over the break you found a new synesthete. Yeah, so I was contacted by a colleague of mine at, at UM who is a U.S. Um, memory champion in, in all kinds of disciplines and who thought that he, uh, through his training, developed uh, different kinds of synesthesia. So what are, what, what are memory sports? Like, what happens? So well, memory sports, there are many uh, different disciplines. Some people go, you know, go in and try to re recite the number pi to as many decimal points as possible. But there's also these sort of generalized uh, disciplines where you just have to be good at various different disciplines. So you'll have to remember cards, for instance. Um, so in fact, you have you, you, you look at, um, a, say, four decks of cards, and then you you have a very short amount of time to do that, and then you get four decks of cards that are mixed up in a different way, and then you have to organize them in the same way. Mm -hmm. um, or you have like 200 faces with names next to them, first names and last names, and sometimes they're like American names, sometimes they're not. Mm -hmm. And then um, you have a very brief amount of time to look at the, all of them, and then you get just the faces, you know, you get the names. Uh, so you can sort of like, so you have the names, you actually have to remember the spelling of the name as well. And then you have to okay. write down what each person is called. And then you get special points, of course, if you remember both first name and last name, and, and you get a point if you get just the first name. Um, or you might have to, they might give you just a sequence of, of a thousand uh, digits, and then you have to uh, sort of continue that. So that might be an arbitrary sequence within the first, say, 10,000 decimal points of, of pi. Mm -hmm. And they give you like this arbitrary sequence, and then you just have to continue um, or tell what, what comes before or something like that. Um, so it's sort of so, so I met someone who had trained for that, and um, who's my colleague, and he said that he thought that this training and his mnemonics um, actually made him develop a form of synesthesia. Okay. Uh, there, a couple of different kinds of synesthesia. So, so maybe um, you can tell our listeners what uh, synesthesia is. Yeah. So, so my understanding is with the memory sports, kind of the way that they train is that they come up with different mnemonic devices to help remember certain patterns or series of things like numbers. So they'll take a four digit number and uh, rather than trying to remember all four digits, they'll try to associate that with some, some object like an apple or something so that it's much easier to remember this kind of visual object. And um, that, sometimes is related to synesthesia because uh, synesthesia is this condition where we uh, have kind of a cross wiring of the senses um, where sometimes people um, see have visual experience associated with something they hear um, or um, auditory experience with something they feel something like that but um, in the case of these this memory training um, sometimes the my understanding is sometimes the uh, the objects they associate with the numbers become almost automatic. Uh, yeah. And sometimes the, the association becomes so strong that they start having these sorts of synesthetic experiences when they when they see that number. So they might actually visualize an apple um, in the same way that you would when you hear the word apple or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that that happens with uh, with this uh, U.S. memory champion. Uh, so, so he he his method was interesting. So his mnemonic, uh, of course, it also involves some, some sort of landscape where you could sort of place the numbers if you had to remember uh, sequences of numbers. But what he had was um, he has so for every two digits um, he has there's a particular person 
um, that is associated with those two digits. Uh, and, and, um, and for instance, um, I, I asked him about 12th, I think it was 12th. That was himself. It turned out to be himself. So that was the only one I asked about. <laughs> it okay. turned out to be him. Um, but then he also has an object and an action. So, and he does that in order so he can he can create like six digit, for instance, six digits scenarios where where say a person is holding an object and also performing an action. Okay. And when he remembers cards, it's similar. So the cards will have. Um, he has like an automatic way that his mind translates them into numbers. Well, of course, some of the cards will have numbers, but then also um, the particular color of the card will be translated into a number or an action or something like that. And so, so he can, um, so, so his whole mnemonic uh, strategy is via this um, numbers, two digit numbers to um, people, and to actions and to objects. Mm -hmm. and, and now it's so automatic that if you say a number, you can't, it's just, it just pops up. It's, it's like, it's it sort of becomes a visual image mm -hmm. in his mind. Interesting. So, yeah. So what kind of things can we glean from that in our research? Well, so we, we, we have seen uh, several cases in our book. We talk about several cases uh, where you can, you can teach yourself synesthesia using different methods. And we have also looked at cases where we've been able to teach people synesthesia. But these cases, these memory champions, is, that's definitely also further evidence that synesthesia is something that can be taught. So it's not always right. something that you're born with. Right. Well, it sounds very interesting, and I'm really excited to see what we can uncover with this. Yeah, yeah, that would be really interesting. Well, we talk about other cases in the, in the book, so. Yeah, and it's becoming, I mean, um, it's becoming more and more obvious that it, it's something that it can be learned, that we're, we're running across more and more people that, um, that have learned it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's more and more evidence for that. So that's very exciting. And so, so here we have a case where memory um, gives rise to synesthesia, whereas some people want to develop synesthesia in order to aid their memory. So, right. So I guess it can go both ways. Right. Well, that's really interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, it was good talking about this. It was good to talk to you uh, again, Kristen. And uh, I'll see you uh, next week. And in the meantime, you can you can all read uh, the superhuman mind. All right. Bye. Okay.